Every day, at least 40,000 vehicles use this motorway between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. But on Route 443, part of which crosses through Palestinian territory, none of the drivers are Palestinian. That changes, though, on May 28th. From that date, and for the first time in 10 years, the concrete blocks will be removed, and Palestinians living in villages along the road will once again be able to use it. They built it on people's land, on farmers' land, and we were barred from it. This decision shouldn't have been taken. The decision to bar Palestinian vehicles from Route 443 was taken by the army in 2000, after several Israeli motorists were killed and wounded in attacks on the road, a ruling that was only overturned by the Israeli Supreme Court last December. Human rights activists who brought the case welcomed the change of heart, but they're disappointed that the powers still granted to the Israeli army. The problem with the High Court's decision is that it enables the army to partially open the road and conduct verifications on passengers. We will continue to put pressure on the army to fully open the road for Palestinians. But even when Palestinians are free to use this road, there will still be the walls and the barbed wire along the 15 kilometers of the route that passes through the West Bank. And there will still be no direct access to the town of Ramallah. Security remains a concern for the Israeli army. Of course for us it's a concern when you have uh, only one other route between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. Uh, and that's why our need was that this road always be open. Terrorism generally is on a decline in this region. In the past, we had drive-by shootings, we had sniper fire. For the 35,000 Palestinians living close to the motorway, news that they can use the road, which for years has been a barrier, is welcome. But Route 443 remains a continual reminder of the conflict over these lands.